All right. So my name is Kate with Scott Leroy Marketing. I will be teaching for you guys today. Um, and today we are going to be covering the opportunities um, and sales pipeline within command. Um, so hopefully that is what you are here for. Um, now this is kind of a rough overview. We won't deep dive too terribly much, um, but we're gonna cover the basics of how to um, add your contact to a opportunity, get started with that and move it through the pipeline as your transaction progresses. Um, in case you need to access today's recording after the fact to refer back to it or to follow along, you can check that out on our YouTube channel, um, which is just Scott Leroy on YouTube. I will drop this in the chat for everyone. Um, when you are checking out our YouTube, I recommend to check out the videos tab um, because that will show you the most recent uploaded videos. Um, whereas if you're searching, you can sometimes find one that is super old. For example, if we search today's class, Uh, you will notice that it's going to not pull them up in the most in the newest order. So it's definitely easiest to find that on the videos tab um, so that you find the most current video. Definitely subscribe so you check out the tip videos. We do do weekly and daily tip videos that go over new content and commands, new updates. Um, so it's great to check those out. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's class. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is of course log into command. Um, command is going to be agent.kw.com. Hopefully everyone has that, but I dropped it in the chat just in case. Um, and from there, the first thing we wanna do before we actually go to the opportunities pipeline is we wanna make sure our DocuSign account is connected. Um, and the reason for that being is because you are going to be using DocuSign or dot loop in some offices, but we are gonna focus on DocuSign today because that is what the majority uses. Um, but you wanna make sure one of those two are connected so that you can connect that to your opportunity and send and receive documents for signatures um, and to be completed. So in order for us to check that DocuSign count, we wanna go to our name in the top right corner. From there, we want to go into settings. Now, once we're in settings, we wanna check out the applications. Usually that's the first thing that pops up. You're under the integrations and applications. Um, you'll wanna make sure DocuSign says connected. Um, if it says anything other than that, if it says um, send invite, resend, um, authorize, any of those things, anything that does not say connected, um, you are not connected to DocuSign. If you run into any issues getting that connected, um, definitely reach out to our support email. It's support at scottleroymarketing.com. We can take a look and help that uh, connection. Um, if you are a dot loop user, you'll also be able to see if that is connected here as well. However, this will generally not populate in the application section and you would have to go to the marketplace um, to add that and connect that. Once we are connected though, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna head over to our opportunities section. Um, so if you're not familiar with command, you can expand uh, this search bar over here by hitting the red and white KW. That will allow you to see each of the applet names, um, or you can simply hover over those to find the one you're looking for. Um, now the opportunity sales pipeline is gonna look like a handshake basically. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and click into that. Now, once that all loads, you'll notice that we have our opportunities dashboard here. And we're gonna just cover this entire thing and just do an overview of it. Um, if you don't have a third or a fourth option up here, do not worry. This is if you're on a team. Um, so if you're not on a team, you'll just have your own pipeline and then you should have the all opportunities section. Um, team pipeline is gonna allow you to create opportunities that are owned by the team. Um, and allow you to work those and close those through the team. Your personal pipeline are going to be yours. Um, so again, if you're a solo agent, that's gonna be the main one you're working out of. Um, and then All Opportunities is gonna allow you to view all of those. Um, all Opportunities is great because once you've closed an opportunity and your office has completed a transmittal, your closed opportunities will fall off of this pipeline view. So you can see where it says zero for all of these. 
if you close a deal on October 4th and November 4th, you're looking for it and you're not seeing it, you're going to want to come to all opportunities to search for that. So they do fall off after transmittal and they've been fully closed and completed. Um, you can also search for archived opportunities and everything like that here. Um, we'll come back to this in one second, though. Now, once we're in our opportunities pipeline, you'll notice we have three different ones. We have a pipeline for listings. We have a pipeline for buyers. We also have a pipeline for leases. Um, so you do have all of those there. Um, now, within each of those pipelines, you also have different phases of where you are in that transaction. Um, so we have the cultivate section. This is where you're kind of building your relationship with the person, um, hoping that that will progress into a deal. Um, you have the appointment section. This is going to be where you have scheduled or held an appointment. Active, you have an active buyer or a listing. Um, generally, this means you have a listing agreement or a buyer agreement and you're actively um, selling their property or looking for properties. Under contract, pretty self-explanatory. You are under contract on a property. Either the listing is under contract or your buyer. And then closed, again, similar. It's self-explanatory, but your deal has closed and everything has been completed with that. Now you'll also notice we have a couple of things under each of the buckets. We have numbers first. That's gonna tell you how many opportunities or potential buyers you have in that specific phase of your transaction. So if we're looking at Scott's here, he has 14 different buyers or seller, well, sellers in this case, that are under that cultivate section. Five of them are in appointment section, six active and three under contract. Now these are all fake, but um, this would show you what you have in your pipeline. You'll also notice you have the volume there. That's gonna tell you how much volume is within that specific bucket. Um, and then you have the average time. So this is gonna tell you how long that opportunity, that person is in that specific phase. Um, now hopefully yours isn't, you know, 244 days or anything like that. But these will adjust based on when you're moving people through the pipeline to give you a more accurate picture of how long your people are taking to cultivate them into an appointment or to go from appointment to active. So um, keeping that pipeline flowing is really good for you to get a better idea of what those numbers look like. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now at the very end of that pipeline, we have our GCI, gross commission income. You're going to see that we have potential income. This is going to give you if everything in this were to move and close, this is how much you would make. Um, now probable income is a little different. This is going to adjust based on the percentage of the likelihood of it closing based on where it is in the transaction. So, of course, as you get closer to under contract and close, the probability of that opportunity closing and you seeing that income is going to be more likely. Um, so it is going to adjust based on where you are in the transaction and where you're moving those. Now you have those for each of the three different types of opportunities that you can take a look at. And then if we come all the way to the bottom, you will notice we have some ratios and graphs for you guys to take a look at as well. Um, your listing versus buyer versus leased ratio, how many buyers and sellers you're working with, um, it will give you that idea. You also have the uh, graph over here. You can change this to be all opportunities or if you wanna take a look at listings buyers, et cetera, you can adjust that. And then if you do have any closings this month, those will display here as well. Um, now moving over to the all opportunities section, this just shows you again where you can filter and find all of your opportunities, no matter which um, pipeline they're in. So if they're in listing or buyer, you can view all of those here along with all of the information. So opportunity name, address, who the assignee is. This is more important if you're on a team um, and you have different people assigned. The type of listing or the type of opportunity it is, what phase that is under. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of closed ones in here that I didn't see on the pipeline before. Um, again, that's because they tend to fall off after they're closed. 
volume, commission, close date, if you have any tags for those specific opportunities. And then you do have three dots where you can view and archive. Um, now, archiving opportunities is going to be based on where you are in the phase. Um, if it's already closed, you can't archive those. Um, generally, if they've already been paid out and they're closed, you can't archive them. Now, ours are not active opportunities, so you're not seeing that displayed here. Um, but you may run into that in your own. Now, you can also change this to show more opportunities if you like. You can, of course, use the filters, the search bar. Um, you can create smart views in here if you want to see specific. Um, or we do get a lot of requests because you can't archive those closed opportunities. People don't want to see them. So you can create smart views to filter out those closed opportunities so they're not um, bogging down your opportunity section here. Now, if we come back to our pipeline over here, um, we'll go ahead and start creating one and jumping into how we move that through uh, the pipeline. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create opportunity up here. Now, if you are in multiple market centers, it is very important to select the correct market center for that opportunity. Once a market center is set, that cannot be adjusted. So you would need to recreate the opportunity. Um, again, that's just if you're in multiple market centers. Um, that is going to go for teams as well. If you are on a team um, and you create it in your personal pipeline, there is no way to move it to the other one. So you would have to start all over. Um, so I just like to mention these three here. Once they are set, they cannot be changed. So market center team and the type of opportunity. Um, so if you set this as a listing and it was supposed to be a buyer, you would unfortunately just want to start all over. Um, we're going to go ahead and set a listing for today. Now we are set as the owner. This will change um, if you're on a team. The Rainmaker is always going to be set as the owner usually. Client, this is where you can enter your client's name. Um, when we click there, you see we have no options. But if we start to type, um, you'll see that it will pull up our contacts. Or if you need to create a brand new contact that you haven't plugged in just yet, um, I'm gonna type SLM class and you'll see that it allows me to add a new contact. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now then I can add their email, phone number, all of that good stuff. If there is a co-seller, this is where I can then change the opportunity name. So if I know the listing address, I can also type that in. So we're just gonna add one here. If you have any opportunity tags you would like to add, so you can pick your um, tags here that you've created previously, or you can add a new one by typing it. Um, we'll just do class, and we can create that right there. Now, some of this other information is not required, and you may not have all of these details when you're first getting started. Um, so if you don't have an estimated closing date, if you don't know the time frame. Um, or the estimated listing price, you can of course leave those blank. You will need to enter commission. I'm just gonna put one in here. And then if you are in a specific phase, so if you've already met with this person, you can of course change this. Um, for this though, we're gonna go ahead and leave it in cultivate and in the watch phase, which our stage, which we'll take a look at these in just a second, the various different stages. Once we have everything plugged in though, we can go ahead and hit create. Now, once I hit create, I am automatically brought into the opportunity itself. However, if we wanted to go back, we can click that link. We can even go back to here. Now you'll see I went from 14 to 15. If we click in this, this is where we can see those different stages. So in the cultivate, we have watch, nurture, hot. This is as you're building that relationship and you're getting closer to the next phase. Um, so we should be able to find our opportunity in here. So we are at the very bottom. Um, now, as you move these opportunities through the pipeline, you can simply grab them. You'll see it has a hand. You can drag them and drop them to the next stage. Um, now, as you're doing that, you'll also notice you'll have some checklists. Um, yours may be different than ours. We do have a class that goes over the opportunity checklist in greater detail. Um, and we even have checklists that you can use and create your own. Um, but you'll see those. Now, those are going to be specific tasks that you may want to do as you're moving an opportunity along. 
if you have specific things for marketing or getting a, a listing ready for like photographs and staging, things like that, you can create tasks for those just to keep uh, create some consistency in your business and make it a little bit easier to make sure everything is getting done for everyone and you're just providing that excellent service. So again, as we drag these and drop these, you'll notice at the bottom, we still have that probable income and potential income. That will still adjust as we move along. That will be for each specific stage. Um, now, when we're ready to drag him, say we have our appointment, we're ready to move to the next phase. We can also drag and drop up to the top. Now you'll see that that box is gonna turn like the bluish color. And we just go ahead and drop that there. Now you get the idea of dragging them and dropping them. So what we're gonna do is actually take a closer look at the opportunity itself. So if we click into that, we have our opportunity details. This is gonna give you the key information. So the address, things like that, um, property, or I'm sorry, address is not over here. It is because I put it in the title, but property address is over here. And then if you have key dates, so again, you can start to set those key dates. These will come into play for tasks if you want to create smart due dates that will prompt you to um, do specific tasks as you're getting to those dates. So um, that is kind of a new feature. Parties in the transaction, seller worksheet, financial info. Um, and then, of course, you do have the ownership here. Um, so if you're having a hard time finding an opportunity that was supposed to be in the team pipeline, this would be a good place to check and see maybe why it's not there. Uh, moving along, though, we have our marketing. Now, this marketing will only appear in the listings pipeline. Um, the reason for that being is it's going to create specific or recommend specific listing information based on where you are in the transaction. So as we move this opportunity through the pipeline, it will suggest to me different types of marketing um, based on where we're at. So if we were under contract, um, we might see some under contract social posts that we create or flyers things like that, just to create simple marketing for you. Again, you'll only see that on the uh, listing side. And what's great is if you select this listing, so if you know your listings address, it will start to plug in that listing information um, easily for you as well. Now, if we've added this listing already and we're able to pull it and link it to our opportunity, we can do that here. Again, we just click that select from listing. And then once we're here, we can search based on property address or MLS number. And this will search the entire KWLS. Now, if this is your listing, you would want to probably have that on all um, my listings. However, if, um, if you're not seeing it, you can always switch this to show all listings. Now I'm just gonna find one here to add so we can see what that looks like. I'll just grab this one. Now that I have my listing synced, you'll see that it's changed that. I should also see that now in my details section under the property info. Um, and then again, as I'm doing these designs, um, I can easily pull in my listing now because it will already have that listing pulled up for me to add those images and listing details straight to whatever design I'm creating. Now we also have our document section. Now the document section is where you will keep your compliance for you to submit to your market center. Now, when you're in this section here, you are going to want to keep an eye on the status, but you want to first check your, um, pick your checklist. So these will be different based on the market center that you're in. Your market center staff is going to create specific um, checklists for each type of transaction you might have. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do residential listing for this one. Now, once I've selected that, you'll see that I start to get a checklist of documents over here on the right-hand side. Now, these are going to be different based on, again, that type of um, checklist that you selected. But you'll also notice that we start to get required, conditional. Um, you might also see, there it is, optional. So this will tell you based on where you are and what is required for your compliance. Um, so it gives you a great idea of what you're needing to be approved once you start submitting that. You'll also notice we have three different little buckets over here. So we have the listed. These are going to be those type of documents. Once you're under contract, you'll have a different set of documents. 
If you have uh, gotten to the closing section of your transaction, you'll have that. If you need to create custom folders for different things that you have that are not required or listed in your checklist, you can certainly add a custom folder here and add those documents there. So that will just give you the section to upload any additional documents you may want to save for this specific transaction. Um, now that we're in the document section, this is where it becomes super important that we connect it to DocuSign first. Um, so anytime you have an opportunity, you're going to want to create your DocuSign room from within command. If you don't create it in command and you start it in DocuSign, the two are not going to communicate and there's no way to link them after the fact. Um, so if that ever happens, uh, the alternative to that is downloading documents from DocuSign and uploading them manually from your computer, which is fine. It's just an extra step. Um, but to create that DocuSign room in the opportunity, you're gonna wanna hit this start transaction. Um, now you'll see I have a drop down here. This is because I have both DocuSign and DotLoop connected in my settings. If I didn't have that, I probably won't have this drop down and it will just say start a transaction. Now, if I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna allow me to select which one. That's why I said, if you don't have both, it should just redirect you to whichever one you're connected to. And that button, that start a transaction should bring me to DocuSign. And if I were signed in, it would bring me directly into the opportunity room. Um, let me see if I can show you guys what that looks like really quickly. When you do that, give me one second here. Sorry, just doing some login in on my other screen here so we can take a look at what that actually does. All right, so for example, if we have Minnie here and we go into her opportunity and go to documents. Now I'm already signed into my DocuSign account so it's not going to prompt me to sign in when I come here and select my checklist. And then if I hit, oh, it says it's not connected. Which is weird because it shows connected. Let's see if I have one that already is connected. real time trying to do this. <laughs> that one worked. Okay, so we started our transaction and it's going to automatically bring me into my DocuSign room. Now, in some cases, you will have documents that automatically populate. If you don't, that is okay. This is based on your market center and how they've set up your checklist, um, whether they auto populate specific documents or not. So if they don't, you should be able to still grab whichever documents you need um, and pull those into your DocuSign room. But that is just a quick look at what that actually looks like when you hit that start a transaction button. Now, once your transaction is started and you have an opportunity room that's created now um, within DocuSign, my button now changed to go to transaction. Um, so anytime I need to go into that DocuSign room, I can simply click that button and it should bring me directly into that room like you saw on the other screen. Um, now, once I have that, you'll notice I now have attach files from, and then I also have, I can select the room that I'm in. So this is where I can easily switch this if I didn't have it connected to pull documents straight from my computer into my opportunity. So we're just going to grab one here really quickly. Just grab this. Now I can attach my files and then submit that to be approved by my market center. Now I'm not going to submit this um, because that is not a document I actually want to submit, um, but I can still click on this and view that. I can also check these dots and remove or print 
um, so that I can get my compliance ready to go. So I'm gonna remove that. And that is how you can add those files there. You can, of course, drag and drop as well. Now, if we switch this back to DocuSign, this should let you pull those directly from that room. So that's what makes it so easy when they're connected to each other to pull in those documents once they're signed and get them um, approved for compliance. Now, you will need to, again, do those in each of your folders. Um, but that is the document section. Just looking at the chat, I don't see any questions. If you guys do have questions as we're going, though, feel free to drop those in the chat and we'll take a look. Now, the next section is going to be the offers and commissions section here. Now, as you can see, it says offer timeline. There are no offer deals. So once you have a offer on your listing, you can come in here and add a new offer. This is where you can create that. You can change the offer name. You can add the property address that should already be pulling if you've already linked it up here. Um, so as you can see, it's already pulling that detail. Property type, this is where you would select if it's residential, commercial, or land. Classification, um, is it resale, new home, et cetera? You pick whichever one applies. Total units, of course, it's just one because it is a home. Seller information. It should already be pulling most of this. And then you have buyer information. You can go ahead and put them in here. I always use Disney characters, keeps it fun. Buyer agent representation. So this is where you could put the buyer agent's name. And then you can go ahead and start plugging in your terms and dates. So sales price, um, I don't remember what that one said. We're just gonna enter a number here. If they're putting cash, just gonna make up some numbers today, guys. If there's earnest percentage or earnest amount, you can enter one or the other and it will adjust that. Um, I'm just gonna put in a number. Not held by the market center or held by the market center, you can adjust that. Contract date. Go ahead and do today. Closing date, you can select that. If there are any contingencies, you can add those here. And if you have any comments. Now, these comments are not sent to the client unless you choose to send them. Um, so if you just have any comments or notes you want to add, you can certainly add those here as well. Um, you can create offer, or if the offer has been accepted, you can create and accept. Um, we're going to do create so you can see what that looks like. This is great because if you had multiple offers, um, you can put them all here. So let's just do another quick one. And single. Again, I'm just making up random dates, guys, so we can get this added. If there are any other information, create. Now, this is if we had multiple offers. This then allows us to do select all, and we can do compare. This would give you an easy way to compare this and send this. If you had multiple offers, you could send this to your client. Um, you can email the offer comparison and it will send over that information. So if you did have notes or comments that you wanted to add for your clients to see, um, you can certainly do that. Again, most of you are probably doing this via phone, but if you also wanted to have this just as a visual to send over to them, you can do that. You can also download that comparison and it will provide you with that that you could also send over in an email. So just a little, Fun fact there on comparing if you have multiple offers. Now, if you did have multiple offers, you can decide which one is the best and you can go ahead and accept that, whichever one the client has agreed to. Now, once we accept, oh, we forgot a date, that's okay. Save. And of course you can still edit those offers. So if there are changes that need to be made, you can go in and edit or remove. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit accept for Minnie Mouse. And 
Not sure why it's doing that. And now I don't see Mel, so. Okay, well, for today's class, we're just gonna pick a different one so we can move along. Or not. So if you're running into this issue, you may want to email us. I'm not sure why it's giving me this currently. And I don't wanna sit and troubleshoot it because I don't wanna waste too much time. So what I wanna do is go back and see if I can find one that already has an offer submitted. So we can take a look at that one. Let's go back. Sorry about that, guys. Let's try this one here. Ha, okay. So if we were to accept that offer, we would then get this. So we have the option to change the response. We also then have the manage commission option. Um, and managing commission brings us in to set up our commission so we know who's getting paid what. So this allows us to put in all of our information for that. And it's gonna break down each of those. It shows us commission amount, broker amount, bonuses, concessions. If there are any outside referrals, um, any associate royalties and uh, company dollar, you can see those here. If you're adding on any e &O or bold, um, you can add those in. Um, and then how much is being paid to the agent versus other deductions. Now, once you've got your commission all configured and ready to go, you can then submit that to the market center along with your documents so that your office staff can review that and get you ready to be paid. Um, now, of course, you can still come in here and edit any information until you've submitted that. Um, now, you'll also notice the next section, we have notes. So as you're going through your opportunity, if you're looking to add specific notes um, based on things that you're discussing with your client or just things you wanna notate, um, you can always keep your notes here. These are for you only, they are internal, so they are not shared with your client. Um, you do also have timeline, which is gonna give you the full history of the opportunity from the start date to everything that you've done through command on that opportunity. So it's gonna show you tasks, documents, all of that. It's gonna give you a running um, list of every action. Um, you can generate a transaction summary, which will allow you to pull all of that information out. And then if we go back, you'll also notice we have client updates. These are gonna be based on your tasks. If you're wanting your client to be notified of those tasks, um, it will send a daily email based on the tasks you would like them to know about um, as those are being completed. Um, so that will bring us into these tasks over here. Let me go back because they're not showing there. Refresh here. Everything says zero, but I don't think that's correct. I know I had tasks in there a little bit ago. There we go. So now we have some tasks. So with those client updates, you'll see it says off when I'm in these um, little cards as well. I can turn those on. I can also check and view those. Um, so this is where I can decide if I want someone to be notified of that. Um, we come up to the stages and checklists, and sorry, we're jumping around here. It's throwing me off that those weren't working. We can edit our checklist for each opportunity. So if you want to set a standard for all of your opportunities, you can come into this section and create those. Um, now we do have a sample of those and we'll put those in the notes for today and I'll add them in the chat if you wanna take a look and apply any of them to your transactions. But this allows you to customize this for any opportunity going forward. So every listing that you've had, 
would apply these same tasks for you to do. And this is where you can turn on if you would like the client to be notified when that's completed. Um, you can turn that off if you want. And then you can save that. And this will allow you to do it for each of the phases and stages. You can create each of those different um, checklists. If we go back, we can check those off as we're doing them. We can add a due date. Um, you can edit them here. Again, this just gives you all of the tasks for the opportunity as you're moving it through the pipeline. So if we were to move it to under contract, we will have a different checklist. Basil. So why aren't those showing? There we go. So now we have those checklists there. So again, we can turn that on or off. And to do that, we do that within their opportunity. Right here. And turn that on and it will start sending those daily emails. Now you can select what time those are going out, um, who they're coming from, which should be you unless you're on a team, and then who you want to send that to. So if you want to get a copy yourself, or if there's another person on the transaction that you would like to see those, um, say you're working with an admin that's keeping track of those, they can also get a email of that. You can add them here. You can also preview what that email looks like when that's sent over to them. Um, unfortunately, you can't customize this. However, anything that is sent here is only going to be the items that you've turned on for them to receive updates on. The information up here will pull from your marketing profile in command, and so will the information down here. Um, all of that information will pull directly from that profile. So you do wanna make sure those are up to date. The body of this email itself though cannot be customized um, to change how that looks. I go ahead and hit cancel changes. And as you can see, we're in the under contract section. So again, those marketing items have changed. It's giving us a different set of recommended marketing. Um, so we can take a look at those. If we remove him to close as well, it's going to do the same thing. However, when you do move to close, it does request that you put in a closing date. Just leave it as today. And then if we go to close, we can find that again. You'll see now we also have another set of marketing. Guys, that is the most of our class today um, that covered the overview of opportunities. So I do want to allow some time for questions. I always like to leave room at the end for questions um, a little bit earlier than I expected today, but that is okay. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat for me. Um, if you do need to raise your hand and ask your question verbally, just let me know um, and we can do it that way as well. I'll go ahead and stop recording though so we can get to some of those questions.